Back now on America's Forum, pleased to be back here with Miranda Kahn. And also we want to welcome in Boston criminal defense attorney Jeffrey G. Nathan to help break down this case, the trial, and what to expect. Jeffrey, as always, we appreciate your insights here on America's Forum. Now, there are reports today that there are going to be over 1,200 potential jurors questioned. Jeffrey, why so many? Uh, they've got to wean out those jurors who just, for whatever reason, cannot find it within them to impose the death penalty once a verdict is reached in this particular trial, which, of course, is inevitably going to be a guilty. And so you need a huge veneer in order to find those so-called death penalty qualified jurors. And Jeffrey, with the death penalty being on the table and emotions running so high, how long do you anticipate the jury selection process to take? Well, uh, I hope that there's a plea bargain that is reached uh, for the benefit of both the defendant as well as the United States of America prior to the seating of a jury. Uh, however, if a plea bargain is not reached in this particular trial, I would estimate it would take between two weeks to one month uh, to find a death penalty qualified uh, jury, which would consist of 12 jurors who are telling the judge, not the defendant, but the judge, that they could impose and will impose the death penalty once a verdict is reached. Jeffrey, you mentioned that it's your personal hope that some sort of plea bargain agreement is reached. That would suggest no capital punishment in this case. Why do you believe uh, there should be some sort of, of plea bargaining, some sort of deal, instead of a full trial? Well, uh, a plea bargain in this particular matter would uh, dispense with the need uh, to go through a death penalty trial, it would mean no death penalty imposed upon the defendant, which, however you come down on that side of it, would at least spare the federal government the cost of a death penalty jury trial, which is enormous. And for that reason, there's going to be a lot of pressure on both sides to sit down on the ninth floor conference room and hammer out a plea deal, which would be in writing. Uh, and that's what I think is going to go on right now as we speak. But Jeffrey, don't you think the prosecution will receive a lot of criticism if it went and if it did get to that point where they had a plea bargain? You know, many, many death penalty uh, uh, indictments in the federal court are broken down to the lesser included offense of life in prison without the possibility of parole with a stipulation uh, that the defendant agrees to serve his sentence in 100 percent solitary confinement in a so-called supermax facility so he can never he would never be a martyr for anyone involved in this matter no one would ever hear from this dude ever again and believe me in my humble opinion i believe that's the best thing for this country right now but again jeffrey for those of us who are not attorneys we we take a look at this an act of terror committed arguably an act of warfare committed on the citizens of Boston and America at large on that fateful day at the Boston Marathon a couple of years back. The notion of a plea bargain, a time certain, even if he were to be incarcerated at a supermax facility, the specter that one day, perhaps even a half century from now, he might walk out of that supermax prison. Are you saying it's ironclad, no deal to let him out? He might agree to life imprisonment uh, rather than a trial for capital murder? He could agree to life in prison without the possibility of parole. As you point out, this isn't a, a war crimes trial. Uh, some of us believe that it should have been and should have been removed uh, to the military justice system uh, where uh, it would be, my opinion, perhaps to try this case at Gitmo would be better than to try it in downtown Boston. Uh, but I don't run the show and I don't run the government. Uh, but were I to sit on a panel of attorneys who make the recommendations uh, as to where cases like this should be tried, it would be my opinion that the military should have taken over this. But nonetheless, as you point out, yes, a defendant can agree as part of his sentence to never get out of jail. 
Jeffrey, Ms. Clark, um, the defense attorney for this case, attempted to get a change of venue, but the judge denied that. Were you surprised at all by that? No, I, I wasn't surprised by uh, O'Toole's decisions as well as the appeals court's decisions uh, to, to leave it here. I mean, everyone knows about this trial, and the issue of what is a fair trial, trial has really been watered down, frankly. I mean, it's whether or not you're going to sit there and listen to the evidence, and can you render an, an opinion beyond a reasonable doubt. That's what a fair trial is, Kate. You know, is he guilty? Is he guilty beyond a reasonable doubt? So if you can say he's guilty beyond a reasonable doubt, it's going to be a fair trial no matter where you're sitting. Uh, so it doesn't really matter whether the trial was in Washington, D.C. or Boston, in my opinion. And yet it was interesting, Jeffrey, in your remarks uh, earlier, you said, were it up to you, it would not be in federal court in Boston nor in Washington. Instead, a military tribunal in a place like Gitmo. Now, with a minute 30 remaining, with an administration intent on closing down Getmo, have, have we seen the last of treating these, these uh, occurrences as acts of war? Are we just now back in the traditional court system to deal with this for better or worse? About a minute to answer that, sir. Sure. Well, uh, for worse, I believe uh, this administration has made a decision just to uh, keep these kinds of cases in the standard criminal courts. And although the verdicts have been uh, guilty in so-called terrorism trials, uh, this thing is worse than terrorism. Uh, this uh, is the worst form of humanity known to mankind. And so why the administration didn't uh, usurp jurisdiction and stick it in the military is, is justice system is beyond me. Uh, I don't understand it, but I don't think we're going to see so such transfers uh, in the near future or beyond uh, because, for one thing, our justice system does work. It's just that the inconvenience to the city of Boston and any major metropolitan area that's a victim of terrorism to tie up a whole city uh, because these people want to have their day in court, I mean, we got gotcha. you, and unfortunately, we're tied up by the strictures of time. Jeffrey, Nathan, we thank you very much. We'll continue following this Newsmax Now update.